Hello everyone, Delta One here. Um, I just did two videos and ended up not uploading both of them um, because I ended up putting the phone down instead of actually doing the upload. Uh, but just a quick recap. Um, basically, I was contacted, like I said in my previous video, that um, someone wanted me to basically go in like a objectified debate on topics, like specifically traffic topics. Um, I don't know why, but every time I'm driving somewhere, the lane I'm going is always full, but the, the opposite lane is always empty. Don't know why. I just have this ability. I don't know. It's a gift and a curse. But, anyway, um, basically, uh, the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to cover a topic a day, um, and what I'll do is I'll cover what kind of traffic misunderstanding or traffic law that's always misused or not not sought after each day and I'll I guess I'll explain it to my opinionated view um, and if you want if you give me the idea and you want to give me an, you know another topic let me know if you want me to tell your name uh, otherwise uh, I'll just say um, a, a viewer um, because I know sometimes it's uh, really nice to hear your name on YouTube or hear your uh, YouTube uh, not uh, YouTube name on YouTube. So let me know and I will do that. And uh, well, here we go. Well, today uh, we're going to cover tailgating. Uh, tomorrow, I, I guess I'll, I'll give you an idea of what I'll do next. Tomorrow will be um, not. Okay, we're stopped, so we're stopping traffic five miles an hour and the light's green, so Okay, that car is going around, so Okay, I was just spinning. Okay, we've got an accident. Sorry, guys, we have an accident. And the retard car in front of me moved over when I turned my lights on. So, the reason I turned my lights on, I'll turn my hazards on too. The reason I turned my lights and my hazards on is because we're doing we were doing five miles an hour, nine miles an hour. Um, we were doing five nine miles an hour in a forty-five. So, I turned my hazards and my lights on. So, I mean, you don't want to, you, you want, I want to warn the people behind me that, hey, we're coming up on an accident or something, slow down. And the person in front of me just darted off to the right and freaked out. Eh, another gift and a curse. But anyway, um, the topic for the day, which I was asked to talk about, was tailgating and not just any kind of tailgating, tailgating at a stop. Um, most people, about 80 to 90, sometimes 95% of drivers, um, even close to 100 in some places, do not know that, yes, you can tailgate at a stop sign. Uh, and there's a reason why, just like in moving traffic, when you don't want to tailgate because you, the person in front of you can break and you could rear end them. The same in issue applies tailgating at a light. The rule of thumb, which I know for a fact is in our manual for Mississippi, is the rule of thumb is to stop with enough room between you and the vehicle in front of you to where you can easily see, note, easily see the rear wheels of the vehicle in front of you's tires on the ground in the normal seating position. This means sitting in the not laid back, not hunched over the steering wheel type of position. And the reason for that is because not only is this safer for the people around you, here's the thing. There's two incidences where this craze, craze plays a crucial role. And I'll, I'll quickly explain that. Have you ever been at a light? I'm pretty sure we all have. We've always been at this light where we're sitting there and um, we're going, minding our own business, 
you're at a stoplight, so you look down at your phone, or you're looking off at something else, and all of a sudden, hey, the traffic lane next to you moves up a little bit. Or you're sitting in the left lane and the turn lane moves up. And you assume that you're going, you know, that your lane's going too, and you accelerate and you look forward and your your lane's not going, you slam on the brakes. All right, you'll travel maybe a half a car lane. Um, between accelerating, you know, and reacting and then stopping the vehicle, you'll probably travel a half a car lane. Now, if you stop the distance you're supposed to from the car in front of you, more than likely 80% to 90% of the time, you will stop before you hit the car in front. You probably will now be right on that car's butt, but you will not have hit that car. Now, if you do not stop in that distance and you accelerate, I've seen and know many people that have rear-ended the car in front of them due to um, not paying attention when the car is stopped and rear-ended the vehicle in front. Um, and then you have the whole issue of still hitting the vehicle in front and you didn't cause the accident. And what I mean by that is this. If you're in an accident and you get rear-ended, you will get pushed to some degree, whether it's an inch, five feet, whatever. You're moving because your vehicle is trying to stop in a you know, an opposing force. Depending on how hard it is will determine whether or not if stopping at the appropriate distance will even matter. But in retrospect, if you get rear-ended by a car from behind and you're not the right distance away from the car in front of you like it's supposed to, you're hitting that car in front of you whether you like it or not. And the reason that um, insurance doesn't really cover, well, in, in a lot of states, you rear-ending a vehicle is the vehicle's fault that did the rear-ending no matter what the situation was. One of the reasons for that is situations like that. Because think about it like this. If you get hit by someone, their insurance covers it. But if you get hit by someone and your car hits someone else, you would assume that that person's insurance covers both vehicles. But that's not how it works. The way it works is that your vehicle is supposed to be covered under personal injury, personal property, private property, private injury. So what this means is, is that if for any reason that you rear end a vehicle because someone rear ended you, your insurance actually has to cover the vehicle that you hit. Even though you didn't hit that vehicle, you got pushed into that vehicle, your insurance has to cover um, that vehicle that got hit. Which could all have been avoided if you just stopped the distance you're supposed to and stopped tailgating. Now, there are ways of getting around that. Uh, you can uh, hire an attorney and have the attorney fight for you and have them end up, you know, somehow winning and getting the other person's insurance to cover both vehicles and both person's bodily injury. But in most cases, that's how the insurance works. You have to cover the vehicle that you hit, even though that you were hit into that vehicle. But if you would have been the right distance away from that vehicle, of course, there are variables that are in play, like whether or not it's raining like it is now or if that vehicle hits you at a high rate of speed, then yes, those vehicles come into place. But in most cases, you're not hit at that high rate of a speed. If you look on YouTube and look at crash videos and people that are hit at lights, you'll notice that people get hit, they get off their brake. Um, it can be argued that you should be not getting off the brake when you get hit because you're already on the brake. So if you're getting hit and you get this spontaneous movement that you weren't expecting, you would think you would push harder on the brake to, you know, to resist motion. Um, but you do have fraidy cats out there. You have scaredy cats out there that something happens. They freak out, yell, cover and take their hands off the wheel, want to cover their mouth or take their feet away from the brake. And like, basically, um, what they'll do is while they're on the brake, they get hit, they'll freak out, take their feet off of it. And then before they even get back on the brake, even if they get back on the brake, 
they'll hit the car in front of them. Um, and you'll have people that freak out. They'll have their hands on the steering wheel and be get hit and freak out and, and do that with both hands. By the way, yes, I crushed my hand. Um, well, crush my finger. Um, but will freak out and cover their mouths or cover their thing and scream or whatever and take their hands off the wheel. And what's sad is that that happens a lot, even while in motion and you get in an accident. Or I've seen it where women do that. Or very few men do it. I'm not saying only women do it. Men do. Men will do it too. It's just that women do it more often. Where they will see something happen on the road and take their hands off the wheel and cover their mouths and scream. Why scream? Why? I mean, it's not helping. If you notice that, uh, you know, notice that most guys when they get in an accident, they're like silent. <laughs> And it's not, it's not because we're in shock most of the time. It's the fact that we're just, uh, well, the day just went downhill. Yeah, That's pretty much our mindset for most of the time. When something happens to a guy in any situation involving a car, you get two emotions. You get one you're mad or two you're just mm. well let's get her done <laughs> that's my take on tailgating at uh and stop situation guys i have to go in and i have to go talk to my god grandmother about um my god kids dentist appointment next month make sure she puts in her calendar so she can take them and then I have to go to work oh yeah we're going to work but uh the Rams doing great uh anybody asked you know the Rams doing great um we're looking at some uh copart vehicles um but right now I'm losing practically everything like, I'm having almost as much time. Right, I'm not as I'm not beating as aggressively as I did when I got this truck, but I am in in the process of trying to acquire not another vehicle, a motorcycle, maybe another vehicle. I don't know. Um, we'll both find that out at the end of the week if I end up getting a vehicle or a motorcycle or something to work on. Um, the issue with my current motorcycle is that. My current motorcycle is very hard to get parts for. Um, uh, not because of its year. It's because of its model. It's an FZ6. It's really hard to get parts for this vehicle. I mean, for this motorcycle. So, what I mean by that, like, let's say if I want to get um, the, the rear side fairings. I, I can find one, but not the other. Uh, I think the common side that I can find is the right, but no one has the left. I did eventually find a left, but when I started to find the lefts, and I said, okay, maybe I can get a better looking right one. No, nope, can't find a right one anywhere now. So it, there's usually one part that's not whatever. Uh, like the, the flare, the fairing, the cowl, the for cowl, even though it's an 07, is still 500 bucks for a new one. Use damaged, 275 um, it's not, basically the price, the bike does run and drive, run, run and ride. Um, I'm thinking about selling that bike if I get another bike. If I can't win a bike this month, is it the first year? I don't know. If I can't win a bike this month, I'll probably just go what I was going to put into this bike. Well, into a new bike, into my own current bike. And we'll go by that. I preferably would like to get a different bike. Um, primarily because if I get a salvage bike like the other bike was, I'll know what it was. This current bike had frame damage. So the entire bike's been replaced, but most of the parts were missing. Um, and twisted and whatever, you know, whatever and what, whatever and what, whatever and what, eh, screw it. I can't put a lot of the pieces back together because some of the places were bent. Even if I get new ones, they don't fit right. So, 
I'm stuck at where I am. Well, if I get a Copart one that is um, that has a lot of footprint, I won't have that issue because I can get most of that stuff even used in pretty decent condition. It's really hard to get FZ6 parts in decent condition. Mechanical parts, yes. Um, but cosmetic parts, no. But um, that's where we're at with that. So I'm going to go ahead and do this so I can get to work, guys.